keying. Keying is quintessential to animation. Anything in Maya can be animated, which is very overwhelming to a student. Case in point, I could grab a single vertice and dictate that this vertice is going to be here one second and then over here the next. Very cool stuff. I can go into this object and go into its properties for material and say it's going to be gray one second and it's going to be blue the next. And anything that I right click on, it says set key. Okay. So a keyframe is just a snapshot in time. In this case, I have 24 seconds. And I know that by going in here and saying it's playing in 24 frames per second. Okay, so this is one second long. That's what I mean by real time or 24 frames per second. Now you can dictate that these first 24 frames is going to be one second, which is very short. One, there, it's over with, right? So I would probably need a lot more seconds in order to be able to see my actual animation or it's just going to be one second long. So if it's going to be 24, uh, 48 would be two seconds. 10, 40. Okay, so you can see how that gets really, really out there very quickly. So if I put 240 frames right here, or seconds, that's 24 frames per second, so this is 10 seconds long. So do the math, very important. So in 10 seconds, it's a very long time in animation. I'm just going to snarf that down a little bit to a couple seconds or just play around with the idea that there is 48 for right now. And I'm going to show you how to scale up your keys. So how to set a key and what keys are. We got translate, rotate, and scale. We're going to, we're going to look at keying movement first before we key components. So on the first frame, I can hit S. And S dictates that everything is going to get keyed. That's not always practical, however. You know, you shouldn't think about keying everything. A lot of new students key everything. Later on, you're going to find that that's a very hurtful thing if you go to um, the timeline built into Maya and, or the graph editor. It gets really confusing. So if we want to get rid of that, that keyframe, there's a couple different ways to do it. One, we could go over here and highlight all these and right click on it and say break connections. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is go over here and right click and delete. Okay. If I want to set keys only on translate, it's shift W. Again, if I want to get rid of those, I can right click and say break connections or I can delete it over here. If I wanted to set keys only on rotates, I can hit Shift E. And Shift R is scale. Shift W. And you can see how these are blocking out. Again, I'm just going to go over here and delete it. It's good to know that you can break the connections, however, because let's say I want to only get rid of keying things and rotate. Well, if I had done this, Say I hit Shift W and E. Whoops. Okay. And I wanted to get rid of only the rotate. Well, there's no way to just delete rotate over here. It's delete the entire thing. That's that means that I'd have to know over here that you could break the connections. That's why it's important to know both ways to delete case you want to get rid of only one form of action. All right, so the thing that gets taught the most within the first animation class ever is the fact that you can move an object from one set of time to another set of time. So in this case, let's move this sphere over here and hit Shift W. That will update this 
and now the translate is negative 8.125. And then I'll move my time slider over, move my sphere over, and hit Shift W. Now if I scrub across the timeline in 24 frames, which is two seconds, if I hit play, there it goes. Ooh, right? Now if I wanted to make it a little bit more interesting, I can, on 24 frames, I can move this up and hit Shift W. Now you'll see if I hit play, it arcs over. All right, let's say for instance, here I start out with Shift E, which is rotate. And then while it's up in the air, it starts to rotate. So I hit E on the keyboard, rotate it out a little bit, and hit Shift E. And then at the end, it rotates even more. Okay, let's look at that as far as an animation is concerned, and look at the wireframe to dictate you know, what it looks like as far as the rotation is concerned. Boom, up in the air, back down. Later on, I decide that I do not want it to be rotated. So in the center here, I would have to break that connection. And if I wanted it to go back to normal, I would have to put this back down to zero. There we go. It's no longer keyed. but my original keyframes are still set into place for the translate. All right, now the good stuff. Hold shift, click and drag across the timeline, and I get this. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit so I can see these little yellow arrows. Yellow arrows on the outside state that I can click and drag, and this will scale the timeline. So once at 60 frames or 48 frames, I can now squish it down to 10 frames. Also, if I click the middle arrows, I can move the entire keyframe set over. So instead of having it on zero or one frame, I can go to 60 frames and that's where it starts. Now, in this case, you're gonna get it putting frames on odd places. Like now it's 87.0. We don't want that, so we right click here. And in here we, we can snap. Snapping will allow it to not make stupid choices like half frames or three quarter frames or any of those other things as we move it across. So hold shift again. Okay, if I start going like this, that's not going to change. But when we scale it, that's when it's going to start snapping. All right. Well, that's King 101. How to get rid of them, how to move them around, how to scale them. But this is a poor graphical interface for... Um, dealing with keyframes. So now we're going to look at the graph editor and how it works.